Brought to you by Almond Auctions, the worldwide leader in antique tractor auctions. My name is Arlen Lepper and from Hubbard, Iowa. And we're actually uh, about three miles south of Hubbard here on the farm with a friend of mine, Laverne Meisel, who we have this museum as a partnership effort. Both of us grew up with fathers that used a lot of Ellis Chalmers equipment. And uh, we've, we've been fairly close through the years. And as we got into the Ellis Chalmers collecting, we became closer. And uh, I grew up on an Ellis Chalmers 60 combine. I was running one of those when I was like 12 years old already. And uh, until 2006, uh, Ellis Chalmers all crop harvesters were the only combines used on our farm. In 1931, Ellis Chalmers bought the patent rights to what turned out to be the all crop harvester from a fellow by the name of Fleming out in California. Those uh, ideas were the, the wide cylinder, same width as the sickle, and with the straw rack laying at a 90 degree angle of the head. Uh, turned out to be a successful system for them. Uh, took some years to get it developed and ready for production, but by mid-1935 uh, they were able to move into production. And they built this particular model uh, mid-year 35 through the end of 37. And then they made some refinements and improvements on them for 1938. Harry Merritt, being the head of Ellis Chalmers Farm Equipment Division at that time, uh, led Ellis Chalmers into the production of what became the all crop harvester. By 38, he decided that he'd like to offer a smaller combine at a lower price, $345, and that was a little Model 40. And uh, we have one of those here, and I've been told by a fella who was a good friend of mine, he owned one for a number of years. He said it worked pretty well, but you just couldn't get much done. In 38, we had uh, changes made where we had uh, independent unloading system and we could shut our uh, combine off while we unloaded. That was one of the major changes from the earlier model built 35, 6, and 7. This one here happens to have the engine drive also. We have a very unusual combine here. Uh, the books say that about 200 of them were built in the year 1940. Uh, they were sent out to Washington State in the hilly wheat country out there and uh, it's called the 60 Hillside Combine, and it has a self-leveling cleaning shoe. Also a hydraulic uh, lift on the head, and uh, if you uh, mount this on the fender of whatever the unit is pulling it, you can uh, regulate your height to the header hydraulically. It's a one-of-a-kind combine as near as we know of currently. We know of no others like it in existence. We do a lot of uh, demonstrating of Alice Chalmers equipment in the field up at Hutchison, Minnesota, where uh, Orange Spectacular is held every year. And uh, the people just dearly love those field demonstrations. We run an Alice Chalmers thrashing machine up there, all the models of the combines, balers, uh, plowing, uh, each day. And uh, the people dearly love what they see there. Actually, this next combine is the sweetheart of all the all crop harvesters. The collectors love these number 72 combines. Uh, Ellis had already come out with the Model 90, which we'll talk about next. They came out in 57 with that, and uh, as they were going to discontinue the 90 uh, in 1959, they knew they wouldn't build many more. Uh, they decided to put that similar head on the old machine, uh, basically the 66 Big Bin machine, and it made them just a wonderful machine to run. That's the number 72 built from 59 to 69. And as I mentioned, this 90 machine, much heavier machine, seven and a half foot cut, uh, was built from 57 through 60. Uh, not as successful as it might have should have been. Price was quite a bit higher. Uh, sales were not good on that machine. The self-propelled idea was taking hold already in the early 50s and uh, Ellis Chalmers decided to get into it with their design and they retained the crosswise straw rack rubber on rubber shelling with the Model 100 combine. First ones in 53 still had the WD engine and by 54 they all had the WD 45 engine. They built those 100s, 53, 54, 55, 56, 57 and then for 1958 Ellis revised them and called them the Super 100. Notice the steering wheel now instead of being like an old bus is more like your car or pickup and the angle 
Uh, we had a bigger uh, radiator, a larger air intake, a folding unloading auger. Uh, they had uh, uh, retractable fingers in the feed auger up on the head. There was just a host of improvements. There was a lot better dash panel. Uh, lots of things were improved, but it was only for one year. They built a thousand of those machines, and that was the end of the all crop uh, self-propelled in favor of the Gleaner Baldwin line, which they had purchased three years previous. This machine uh, being the fifth from the last one ever built, and it does have the factory power steering, which was an option there at the late time. It's a true American success story. Uh, Harry Merritt took over Alice Chalmers Farm Equipment Division in 1926 and he soon began to make changes that uh, put them on solid ground in the implement and tractor business. In 1931 he purchased uh, patent rights from a fellow named of Fleming out in California to produce the All Crop Harvester. It didn't get its name till five years later. But uh, he had a vision of selling a tremendous amount of these machines, a lightweight a combine with a price low enough that most farmers could afford it. So that's a little bit how it all began. It, like I said, it's just a true American success story.